Okay, okie dokie, it's time for another episode of Ask Jace. Okay, fair enough, too easy, because the questions keep flowing in. It's bloody awesome, isn't it? So, all right, so here we go. We got Harley D. Harley D, how you going, mate? Sounds good. Your name, that is. Anyway, he goes, Harley D. Hi, Jace. What rust proofing do you get done to your vehicles? Okay, what rust proofing? Okay, that's a really good, that's a really good question. Okay, so um, I get the vehicle, when I get the vehicle new and then straight in, she'll get, um, they use this like a, it's like a tech tool product. It's like a, a wax based sort of, um, oh, sort of rust proofing. It's like very waxy and fluid and you spray it on and it leaves like this sort of tacky finish, right? And the wax helps to hold it there, right? So you use that and that gets sprayed into all the cavities. But first before they do that is they give it a good clean and they chassis black everything. So they use that really black chassis sort of tar based, um, you know, uh, black stuff. I don't, I don't look, I'm, I'm not a technical expert, but it's that black chassis black, that's what we call it. You spray it in underneath and they shove that stuff everywhere. All right, so they're spraying it on the, you know, if you've got a long range tank under there, you could spray some on that as well. Um, spray it all over your chassis and, and um, even your, you know, your suspension component, even on the back side of your bull bar and all that sort of area, your rear bar. So you get that chassis black, you know, everywhere, it'll, you know, in your wheel arches and all that sort of stuff, okay? Don't put it on your brakes, by the way. <laughs> um, and then when they've done that, they'll then stick that sort of honey, sort of tacky honey, sort of wax-based liquid, and it's a clear or a brownie looking stuff, and they shove that into the, into the cavities. Um, you might want to just give it a quick squirt in the bottom of your door sills, uh, places like that, but mainly, you've got to look for those areas where um, you know the sand and the salt water can sit, okay? And then get them to shove, the sti you know, shove it in there. It's, it can, you know, it costs a little bit of money, like you've got to spend a little bit of money, but you, it's, you're prepared to do it um, to look after your investment. Now, every time I go out, uh, the stone chips come through, all the stones, dirt roads, thousands of kilometres, it takes, it can wear all that stuff off. So as soon as I come back from a trip, in she goes, it gets gurney down, they clean it all down and then they redo it. They freshen it all up and, and chassis black it again. And that will be ready for the next trip and so on and so on. So remember, you've got to keep repeating the process and that's what can make, I suppose, stop the rust, especially if you're doing a lot of beach work. So hopefully that hope helps you, Harley D. Okay, so we've got another one here. Um, now this guy, he hasn't put his name. So he's just, it says here, All For Adventure YouTube fan. Okay, so he's obviously been watching All For Adventure YouTube channel. So there's a truckload of stuff on there. Like I mean truckloads, it's a massive channel. I think there's a nearly 100,000 uh, subscribers. So if you haven't, subscribed to that one. But uh, so the All For Adventure YouTube fan asks Jace. What do you guys do for showers whilst away? And do you guys do any clothes washing on longer remote trips? Okay, so first of all, Simon and I don't have a shower together. That's a definite no. So if you're asking that question, yeah, well, we don't. All right, generally we don't, if, there's, if we pull into a campground or somewhere like that, and there's a shower there, we'll use it. But most of the time we don't, I'm not sort of getting the shower out or, you know, I, I, tend, I like to have a bit of a bath in a tub in the, the creek, mate. You got a creek, you go through a crossing. We generally pull over to the side sometimes when we've got a bit of time and quickly then go down into the creek. Simon's constantly down in the creek there shaving his head. How do you think he keeps it all shiny and bald all the time? He's got to shave it. So yeah, we go down to the creek, have a bit of a tub, you know, wash up and, um, Generally, the trick would be then is to give the, the old shorts a bit of a tub up. And if you've got your shirt, whip your shirt off, give it a bit of a wash. Remember, use, don't, don't be using all detergents and all that crap. I'm just talking about using the creek water. And, um, and then you're asking uh, clothes washing. Well, I, don't, I remember a cameraman one trick. He's got the bucket and he's put the clothes, um, the, you know, the washing powder in there and um, he's put his clothes in and then he sealed the bucket down. It was like one of those um, 
20 litre tomato buckets, clip the lid down, chuck it on the trailer and it sits there and rattles and apparently washes your clothes and then, then he gives it another bit of a, a wash when he, and then, you know, rinses out and hangs it out. Well, you know, the problem with that is you gotta have a lot of water to do that stuff. And generally we have enough water to be doing things like drinking water, cooking, okay? And that's about it. We don't have time to be, you know, we don't have the water supply to be wasted on washing clothes. So um, when you're out in the bush and you'll, you'll see our clothes get uh, dirtier as the days go on and then all of a sudden we're in a clean shirt and then that'll get dirtier and then we're in a clean shirt. <laughs> we try and wear the clothes a bit longer than just one day, otherwise you'll be doing heaps of washing in the creek or pulling in the caravan park and doing heaps of washing. I'm not a big fan of washing clothes. So anyway, All For Adventure YouTube fan who didn't put his name, put your name down next time because it's great. You know, you, could, you can relay that question back to yourself. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what we do out in the bush when it comes to showers and washing. Good question, by the way. <laughs> All right, next one. Uh, well, this one's from Lockie. Lockie T. Get on your Lockie if you're watching. I have a light bar to go on the front of my roof rack. Where's the best place to run the lead? to the battery. Okay, so you get the light bar, it's gonna be mounted up on top of your roof rack. All right, so how do I run the lead to the battery? So first of all, a light bar requires a switching point and it also requires power, all right? Now, if you've got a ute and you've got the roof rack on the top of the, the dual cab ute or the single cab ute, um, a good idea to run it along the, along the roof rack and down the back of the canopy and then go in through the chassis along that way, okay? So you're not actually penetrating the body panel of the car, okay? Um, if you've got a wagon, then it gets a little bit trickier, okay? You can run it in through the back door seal, okay? I have seen them do that. But there's another one, is you run it down the, um, there's, a, there's like a, where the windscreen is near the snorkel on the driver's side. You can bring the wire down, there's a trim there, and you can sort of tuck it in there, a bit of sicker, black sicker, and you tuck it in there and then pop it through the little slit um, where the front, um, uh, the bonnet is there, and it'll slip in through there, and then you can get power to the battery, and then of course you've then got to run power through the firewall to your switch. So that's obviously only small wires, the big power will go to the battery under the bonnet. So hopefully that helps, uh, Lockie, uh, that helps you when you're um, wiring up your light bar or even just little side lights. Like I use work lights that come off my, um, uh, my roof rack as well. Because we use that, um, was that Rhino? Rhino rack's got the, the flat one or we can use the Pioneer tray. Um, and you can mount those sort of uh, work lights because they do come in handy uh, for when you're sort of in camp. All right, so Lockie, um, hopefully that helps. But if you're not confident with you know, the whole running of the wires and all that sort of stuff, then um, the guys at Battery World, um, they, um, they definitely know what they're doing. So that's where I get all our trucks done. Um, we send them down there and um, they, uh, they can make it happen, mate. So remember that one. Alrighty, uh, we've got, uh, what, we've got time for one more question. Uh, Dusty, Dusty R. So Dusty, if you're watching, um, your question is, when you fish for barra on your bait caster rods, what line and pound weight do you guys use? I don't see you use a leader on the lines. Wow. Dusty, we actually use leader. I, like, I definitely, we're definitely using leader a 110% because if you're using braid, so on our little bait caster rods, and then we've got bait caster, you've got a spin rod, and then you've got the heavy gear. So let's start with the bait caster. The bait caster uses about 30 pound. Okay, you go 30, 40 pound. Um, when we're up north, we, you know, we're hoping to catch the big fish, so we don't want to get busted off. So 30 pound uh, braid. Um, as you go up, a spin, a heavy spin, you might want to go up to about 50 pound, and then the big overhead, you know, if you're catching the big gear out on the reef, then you might even want to go up to 60, 80 pound, okay? But um, 30 pound, like 30 and 40 pound braid, mate, it can handle some big fish, you know. So there you go. Um, that's the size of the braid. Now the leader, definitely 110%, you've got to use leader. Leader is like the stretch point, okay? 
Um, it can handle abrasion, you know, like, uh, you know, a snag, the rock, or, or the fish's gills, or things like that. All that can, you know, can cut through braid really easily, but if you've got a leader, um, it, handles, it handles that a lot better. And now, if you want to catch the big stuff, okay, and, um, you know, the fish are just jumping on the line, then we use like 80 pound, 60, 80 pound leader. You got to do that little um, improved all bright, they call it. That's, I've found that to be the easiest and the best knot to, loin, uh, to join braid to leader. Improved all bright, remember that one, it's easy to do. I find that knot the most durable of all knots. But anyway, hopefully that helps Dusty and um, keep up the good work, keep the questions coming in and um, I'll see you next time.